Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to another session of Open Media Ecosystems. Is this um, four? I think it's the fourth one. Four? Yes. So we had uh, Zuracast, Owncast. Oh, I'm missing one. Is this three? Jitsi. 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 Yes, I'm missing Jitsi. Yeah, four. And then next week, this is our last tool, though. Um, mm -hmm. And next week, we're going to wrap them all up and use them, basically. Right. So, um, but uh, this week, we're talking about PeerTube. And um, I'm excited. Um, oh, and I'm joined by Pilot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, my name's labeled. You can, you can. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. And this isn't even your first session. So, no. Um, in this, no, no, no. In this course. But, um, yeah. So, this week, we're talking about PeerTube. And um, PeerTube is an exciting one. We, we, we use it for uh, a couple different things at Reclaim. We have Reclaim.tv is powered by PeerTube. Um, I have my own PeerTube instance that I stream like sort of more informal stuff to for mm -hmm. Reclaim. Uh, Jim has his own, has I think a couple of different PeerTube instances actually. He's got Bava.tv, there's uh, no copyright intended, there's um, DS106 TV. Um, right. But I didn't know about no copyright intended. I mean, I think he uses it as sort of his own personal like archive of things. Oh, okay. I, Got I, I it. I think. Um, but um, yeah, PeerTube's a, it's a wonderful tool, honestly. Um, what really simply, I think the website says that it's an alternative to big text video platforms. So it is really trying to, um, and in many ways does things that uh, YouTube doesn't, but it is kind of a YouTube replacement. We're talking about, you know, AzuraCast is your web radio uh, tool. Um, there isn't really a great uh, proprietary platform to compare it to that a lot of people know about, honestly. Mm -hmm. Owncast, we talked about, that's like a Twitch replacement. Yeah. PeerTube is closest to a YouTube replacement. Yeah. Jitsi um, would be Zoom. Browser Zoom. Yeah. Um, Google Meet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I totally forgot about Google Meet. Yeah, yeah, I think lots of people do. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, PeerTube um, is, uh, it, it does quite a bit. So you can upload and host videos there. People can watch videos. People can comment on videos. You can have multiple people have accounts so that there can be different channels uploading to a PeerTube instance. Um, it also supports live streaming, and it's actually really robust, the features it supports for live streaming, where you can have uh, permanent, like, recurring URLs where people can stream to the same URL over and over again, and people can watch them. Or you can make, like, event-based URLs. So this stream goes to this place. Mm -hmm. That's how YouTube typically does it, um, whereas the permanent URLs are more of a Twitch thing. Uh, YouTube does yep. both. Um, well, that's fun. Which is really kind of cool. Um, the, uh, it, 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 um, will handle like, um, transcoding videos. So one of the things with video on the internet or anywhere really is you have to be able to accept whatever format the video is in, but then you need to display it to the browser in a particular format. Um, mm -hmm. and then if you have, uh, people who have lower bandwidth, um, who are on different, uh, like slower internet connections or maybe just older devices, you also want to be able to give it. Uh, them multiple different quality options. Um, right. And so that's also something that PeerTube does and handles the transcoding for that. Because of that, because of the transcoding video stuff, um, this is one of those things that really wouldn't be possible on shared hosting because the CPU you just require to deal with video is just a lot. Um, so so you that's why you run it on the, on the cloud. Um, and I actually think PeerTube is one of those things that is sort of uniquely, um, perfectly suited um, for uh, the cloud because of that CPU thing I was talking about. Um, you use a lot of CPU and cloudlets when you're transcoding your video, but when you're not, which is 99% of the time, you use a lot less. So you mm -hmm. don't have to pay for that all the time, basically, because of the way that uh, you pay for only what you use in Reclaim Cloud. Right. So, what we're going to do um, is we're going to install PeerTube. We're going to map a domain to it. Um, we're going to poke around the settings and talk about what's possible, basically. So um, I'm going to start. Um, if you go into Reclaim Cloud, you can just go to the Marketplace. We have a installer for this one. So 
you can just search for PeerTube here and click on install and you can give it a name. What were you gonna say? I don't know, I, said, I just said, okay. Oh, sorry. Um, so I'll, <laughs> I'll name this one test Taylor that here, how about PeerTube? Okay. Um, and that's cool. Yep, install. So this will take a second. It's going to do everything. Um, there are we'll, we'll map a domain after this is done. There are some setup things that we have to do to map the domain. It's not quite as seamless as um, some of the installers I've worked on. I would like to, in the future, make it seamless. But there mm -hmm. are some realities to how PeerTube works at, um, and how our installer is currently built that there's just some commands you have to run to change the domain name. I'll show those and we'll have them in our blog post so um, that they're easy for folks to do. However, if you're just installing this to play around and you don't need to map a domain, you, you won't have to deal with it at all. It'll it'll work out of the box on the Reclaim Cloud URL that we just made up. Um, so um, yeah, um, so PeerTube is really interesting to, as well because it's um, it's actually developed primarily by uh, Framasoft, I believe is how it's pronounced, mm -hmm. which is a French nonprofit. And this group is actually um, do they do a bunch of stuff? Yeah, well, they're 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 for um, their mission is to sort of further the use of open source tools in the French education, like across elementary, I, middle, and higher ed, basically. I feel uh, like Jim, I don't know, blogged about this? Maybe just talked about this in Slack or something, but a long, long time ago. Months and months at the very least. But I do, I feel like I remember this. Yeah, I think it came up. I'm trying to think of... Um, I, I don't know um, what, what else they have. It's not services. something we need to... <sighs> But um, basically, they do a lot of, um, uh, yeah, so here, they actually, not all of this is stuff that I think that they primarily develop, but they some of it they're sort of repackaging and making mm -hmm. it easier for schools to use. Um, so they've got Frama Forms, which is an alternative to Google Forms. So if I click on that, I don't even know where this is going to go. Um, and this is, this is, they tagged it actually with, that's a Google Forms alternative. They show yeah. you what they're competing yeah. with. It's really, it's just really kind of cool. Um, there's a there's a pretty rich history of French uh, open source in tied to education. Actually, um, mm -hmm. well, I, one of the things we when that came up in Slack, Framasoft uh, earlier this year, I think, or last year now, um, I mentioned that VLC Media Player is is actually came out of. I can't remember off the top of my head, but a, a French university. Okay. It was, it was made because they wanted to deliver cable, <laughs> cable TV to their dorms, um, and they wanted people to be able to watch it over on their computers, mm -hmm. like the video streams for this on their computers, instead of having to supply like cable boxes and TVs and everything. And that the the real cool thing about that is they wanted people to watch live video streams on their computers in like 1996. Um, so like way early to this stuff, like way, way, way early. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that, that was, uh, I don't know. It's really interesting to me. And I was kind of unaware of the, um, the history there, but, um, all right. So peer tubes done installing. We talked so, for that long. Yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. Uh, <laughs> we've got a well-oiled machine now, I think in these ed tech, uh, flex courses of, Let's install the thing, come back. Oh, it's done. Um, yeah, how lovely. So um, so you will get this in the email as well, um, but I'm going to actually uh, just make note of it here off screen. But you will want this uh, root and password here that because um, this is what you'll need to log into to administer your PeerTube. So make note of it here. You'll also get a copy via your email, but um, it's going to be important. So we can click on that URL. And here we go. Um, so we've got our peer tube install. Um, we have, uh, this is the, at the Reclaim Cloud URL. Um, we'll log in and do some stuff in a second. I wanna show right, right off the bat how we would map a custom domain if you mm -hmm. want to do that. So 
um, there are a couple different things we'll have to do. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually map a DNS uh, entry for it. So I'm going to copy this to the clipboard, and you can get to the IP address by just clicking the little, uh, little arrow thingy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I can click on that to copy it. And I'm going to go over to my cPanel, which I already have up. Um, and this is just a shared hosting account that I have. And I, whoops, I logged myself out. Cool. Um, and we're going to go to the DNS zone editor. And we're going to add an A record to one of the domains here. Um, I think we'll do um, here to demo.jaden.me. And then I'll paste in that address. Cool. And so if I try to go there to that URL right now, it should connect, but it's going to give me an error because of HTTPS. Um, so um, I'm actually going to not even visit it just yet. Um, so there's a couple different things we now have to do in PeerTube to have it um, know about the new domain name and issue uh, certificates and things. So mm -hmm. the first thing we need to do is we have to go into our PeerTube configuration file and actually change the domain in there so it knows um, what domain it should be at. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you open up the little config panel here um, and then go to root. Root, got it. Then dot env. Mm -hmm. This is sort of your master file for pretty much everything related to PeerTube. Um, your database credentials are in here, which is why I'm using this with a temporary install. So. No one can see my database credentials that actually matter. Um, but there, there are a few different places we have to look in here. Basically, what we have to do is we have to find the old URL. So here, web server here host name. Yep. Um, and I'm actually going to do a little find here, um, which I did uh, control or command F. That way, it's highlighted for me. Um, and I want to just replace that um, with the new URL. So I'll that um, and so we're changing a few different things here what we're doing that first one we changed what the web server host name should be so that's that's so it will serve it up on the right uh, domain mm -hmm. um, then most of the rest of this is actually having more to do with um, email than anything so it's, it's sort of non-essential okay. but uh, this will let PeerTube send email properly from the domain name that you specify yeah um, and, you know, having mismatched emails is a very good way to get flagged as spam. Yeah, yeah. And there are some other things here, too. Like, if you want to do more with email, you you will probably want to look at the peer two documentation on DKIM, mm -hmm. which is some records that you have to add in DNS. Frankly, the way I'm using PeerTube, I don't have email even set up on mine because I'm the only person logging in. We'll talk about all the different ways you could use PeerTube in a second and what's possible. But um, depending on what you're doing with it, the email bit may not be that important. So I made the changes to the file. I hit save. Um, and then what I need to do now is run a couple different commands. So first thing I have to do is use Docker to stop PeerTube. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to do docker-compose down. And then, and then it's going to take a second. Yep. OK. And then uh, I guess I was sort of getting ahead, but I was going to just say to prevent dead air is that the next one about getting the HTTP at the security certificate. <laughs> HTTPS. <laughs> Uh, HTPST. HTML um, is where I was going with that one. HTML. Um, yeah, HTTPS. Yep, there are our SSL certificate. Yeah, so we have to stop everything um, for two reasons. So mm -hmm. we have to stop it so it will reread that configuration file when we restart it in a second. Mm -hmm. um, we also have to stop it so we can change, we can basically run a command in one of our Docker containers to tell it about the new domain name. Because there's kind of two things that need to know. PeerTube needs to know. But there's also a service called CertBot that will okay. automatically issue the Let's Encrypt certificate for us. And we need to tell CertBot about that. So um, I'm going to paste a command in here. And then I have to go back and 
manually edit it. Again, this is a huge long command. We're gonna have this in the um, um, blog post. Blog post week. so that you can fill it in. But there's really two things. You will need to put your domain name in there. So um, I've forgotten my domain name several Tess times. Test Taylor or no no no. Uh, but your tube test. It should be in your C panel in the zone editor. Yeah, and I I have I use a clipboard manager, so it's still in my clipboard history. Oh, so that's um, awesome. Yeah, uh, honestly, a lifesaver. Uh, <laughs> um, I just don't want to show my whole clipboard history on stream, so I did it on a different monitor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what I'm afraid of, but maybe there's a password in there. Do you, you know? Do you want that URL to be the reclaim.cloud one, or do you want it to be the new one? Oh, you're right. I have the wrong one. Whoops. It's peertube-demo.jaden.me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put my email address in here. You do need to give it an email address so that when it needs to, um, if there's an issue with the certificate, Let's Encrypt will email you and let you know. Mm -hmm. So peertube-demo.jaden.me. So I'm going to run that. And it's going to uh, request a certificate. Cool. Um, all right, so now I just need to bring peer two back up. So I can do docker compose up dash D, which means it will run in the background mm -hmm. and stay running. Um, okay, and now I can go to the new URL. And there we go, we have HTTPS. So um, yeah, so now that we've got- I just wanna quickly stay in Reclaim Cloud for one second. Oh, sure. Uh, and ask about the resources, because 14 oh, yeah. Cloudlet seems small. Yes, yeah, good catch. Um, so um, by default, it's going to deploy with 14 Cloudlets. And to be clear, you can use it on 14 Cloudlets. Um, but you may want to consider upping this cap a little bit. Um, we were talking about the expanding and contracting resources earlier. Yeah, so or encode yeah, transcoding so for setting the limit here. Um, uh, it's always going to use one cloudlet, so I'm going to set that to reserve to be one. But um, the scaling limit being 14, uh, it will it will work. But I would recommend setting this much higher. And depending on your account, you may have 32 uh, as a limit. Um, I have 64. If you need more than 32 on your account, whoop, my watch is talking at me. Um, if you need more than 32 on your account, um, we can up, you just let us know. But, but basically, this just defines how big can a container get in any one moment, right? Mm -hmm. So not stay there. Um, it'll only stay there as long as it needs those resources. The nice thing about PeerTube and giving it more room to work with is the more cloudlets it has available, the faster your videos will be transcoded which is important, especially when you're uploading video. So if, you up, if you've ever uploaded like a long video to YouTube, um, well, really any length video. Um, Go and come uh, back. But I frequently upload a video to YouTube that's like an hour, hour and a half, and it will take YouTube hours, four, sometimes four or five hours to after I upload it to just transcode the video so people can watch it properly. Um, mm -hmm. That's because... YouTube is a free service, right? So they're gonna get to that video when they want to, basically. Um, the cool thing about this with PeerTube is you're running your own thing. Um, so the downside is you have to pay for it, <laughs> right? Um, but the upside is you can get that video transcoded pretty quickly. Um, and when it's done, it won't be using those cloudlets anymore. So yeah. um, I'm gonna set this scaling limit to 32. Um, if you leave it at 14, especially for just playing around, it should be okay. Um, but just to note that that 32 uh, is going to let things happen a lot quicker on the server, basically. Okay. Um, okay. So now that we're back up and running, uh, let me close that. I don't need this anymore. Um, cool. So... This is what PeerTube is going to look like out of the box. Now, there are a couple things that we'll want to do right away. So the first thing is we want to log in as our root user um, that it, it generated for us. And let me grab that password, paste it in there. Cool. So it's going to say, hey, do you want to configure this? Um, yes, 
but uh, I actually want to show you the long way around there in case you accidentally dismiss this. So I'm just going to close this for now. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot going on with PeerTube. So again, PeerTube is a full replacement for video hosting services. So multiple users, multiple channels, different ways to sort videos, playlists, all of that stuff is here. Um, there's a sidebar that shows by default that lets people look at um, the things either in their library if they're logged in or on the entire instance, all kinds of stuff. Um, we're going to go immediately and make a new account. And the reason we're going to do that is this root account, we can change the like public name, but we actually can't change the handle, that at root. And that's important for the way videos display, but it's also important for federation, which is something we haven't even talked about that, that PeerTube does. And that's that PeerTube is also using ActivityPub to be a member of the Fediverse. So just like Mastodon, um, PixelFed is, is another one. What did you say? Write Freely. Uh, write Freely is another one. Um, Owncast, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, is a is Fediverse compatible. I didn't even know that one until Jim discovered that recently. Um, it is a member of the Fediverse. It can be a federated tool as well. You don't have to use it that way. In fact, at Reclaim, we use it for some of those features, but not a lot of them, basically. Yeah. But the intention is, theoretically, you could have a whole social network of peer tubes, right? Like you can have like, your own YouTube. Like. Yeah, but, but not just your own. Like You could link them up with other community members and see their videos on your instance and things okay. like that. Um, so an example of this um, is if we go to archive.reclaim.tv, that one is federated with video.jaden.me, which is my own personal PeerTube instance. So my videos show up here. You the first one. Yeah. Um, so you can see that uh, Taylor at video.jaden.me is the username here. That's pulling that username that we were just talking about. Um, you probably don't want root as your username. It just isn't fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, doesn't have any personal flair. Yeah. The way PeerTube works, though, you need that root account um, to start off with. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to immediately make a new account that we can use for basically everything. I have a root account in my PeerTube. I don't use it for anything. Um, basically, I, I used it to log in once. And if I ever lost access to my main account on my PeerTube, I guess I could use the root one um, to log in. But And make another one yeah. immediately. <laughs> you can also reset passwords at the command line and stuff like that. And via email, like, realistically, I won't ever need it. But... You do have this root account. It has to exist because it's sort of how everything else in PeerTube works from there. So um, we can go to, in the sidebar, administration, and then right on the overview page under users, um, we can create a new user. So I'll make one. I'll call it Taylor Test. Taylor Test. Um, I think you should keep it that way. Yeah, Taylor Test is probably better, honestly. Um, it's important to note that you can have users and channels. Users can have more than one channel. We'll talk about how you can change that, but you can have one person that owns multiple different channels. So the organization here is kind of whatever you want to make of it. On mm -hmm. my own PeerTube, I have one user besides root and one channel. And I probably will never need more than that, right? Yeah. But if you're using this in a institutional context, maybe you want to have a channel for like branded stuff from a particular office, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe something is over here for a student media organization, right? Like the, the, you can divvy that up kind of however you like. Um, so uh, we'll set the channel name. I'm just going to name it the same thing, Taylor mm -hmm. Test, and then we'll put my email address in there. Um, can you, you can reuse the email. That's the same one that's associated with your root account. Yeah, it's okay. You can use okay. the email. Um, I'm going to set a password in there. Um, so you can choose whether the ro role, what the role of the user has access to. Um, I mostly am doing things with administrator privileges. Um, but again, if you set it to say user, you would be able to lock down what they're uh, capable of doing and moderator, kind of like WordPress roles, right? Um, I'm going to set it to administrator for now, though. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can also set on a per user basis the video quota. So 
you can say, hey, this person is allowed to have up to 100 gigabytes of video in their account. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also separately set how much can they upload in a day. This could be real handy depending on what you're doing this for, right? Maybe you are fine with people using up to 500 gigs or more, you know, unlimited. Um, but you don't want to make, you want to make sure they're not uploading just like, I don't know, tons of video in one single day. You can say, yeah, you can have as much storage you want, but only you can upload up to two gigs a day, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you can and make then it finally, hilariously yeah. small. Yeah, you can also do 10 megabytes. I'm not sure how that would work for anything. Um, 10 megabytes is not a lot of video. It's not even a lot of audio. Uh, yeah. But it's Which you option. can do, I think. Like yeah. This quota technically says video, but it also applies to audio, right? Yes. Um, there's a setting we'll get to later that allows, and it's on by default, you can, uh, you can upload audio clips, and what it will do is it will just play the audio and show the thumbnail of the video on the screen. It's not mm -hmm. real fancy, but that's One not thing true. that's maybe more a discussion for next week that I was thinking about was, um, I forget, I think AzuraCast has a recording feature. Um, yes, it does. Yeah. So... AzuraCast has a recording um, you can have it record every broadcast or mm -hmm. certain broadcasts, I think. Um, you could also be recording those locally, right? So, Yeah, but so if you wanted to pull in your live stream history, but also your podcasting stream history. Yeah, yeah, that would be totally possible. Um, so I'm going to set these both to unlimited. And then there's finally a checkbox that... Um, you can set it so that people can upload video, but they can't be public until they're reviewed by a moderator or an administrator. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to um, actually check that box that allows videos to just become public. This doesn't really matter. We're not even really going to log in with this account other than to show you that this is probably something you're going to want to do um, mm -hmm. so you can change your username, basically. So I'll create that user. Uh, oh, maybe I can't have a separate email. Um, hey, you want to use mine? Well, I'm going to do a trick here um, that's good for people to know anyway. Um, so uh, we, we, we can make another channel for you too. <laughs> I don't want to leave you to party. Do but um, I like to do, for stuff like this where you have to have a unique email, you can, if you use Gmail or Google Workspace, you can just add a plus and use that as your separate email. So um, I also could change the email on the root account. I think that would work too, but whatever. Taylor peer tube test. Channel name. Oh, cannot be the same as username. All right. All right. So there we go. Actually, I um, guess that's probably a good security thing. Yeah, I, I well, and I, I think part of that is because of the Federation stuff. So Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've noticed when playing around with Federation is when I follow another PeerTube instance, you can follow the entire instance, which is at the username PeerTube at whatever domain name. So in this case, it'd be PeerTube at PeerTubeDemo.jaden.me. Mm -hmm. You can also follow an individual user, but users can have more than one channel. And you can also follow an individual channel. So it's like going down the line of specific. Oh, specific so... That's saying you could follow the channel Taylor test or the person Taylor test, but if they're the same, it doesn't know what to pick. Exactly. I think that's why they need to have a, uh, I didn't think of that because spent a long time since I created a new channel on PeerTube, mm -hmm. but um, that appears to be the case. Um, and you can always change, you can't change usernames afterwards, but you can change channel, role, email afterwards. And you can, I believe, assign channels to new users or move videos between channels. Um, so yeah, so from here you can on your, from administration, this little drop down will show all the comments, videos, and users across an entire instance. Mm -hmm. There's federation. I'm going to show these things on my main peer tube in a little, what little bit, just so you can get a sense of what this all looks like when there's actually stuff here. Um, there's a moderation menu where you can see people can report videos as inappropriate and you can review those, um, that you can have muted servers or accounts that so that this is having to do with the federation. So if 
Um, there's folks that are following accounts on other servers that have real nasty stuff that you don't want on your peer tube. You can actually block that at the server level from being possible to follow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I want to go into the configuration because there's a lot here that you're going to want to look at right away. Um, so first of all, there is a, a home page. You can have like some information on the home page. So mm -hmm. here is my Neato home page text. And I can update that. And I, I haven't set this on my own peer tube. Um, so I'm not actually sure where this winds up, to be honest with you. Because um, not every theme has like a static. Well, you're page. in slash video slash trending. Yeah. Um, hmm. But. Hmm. I don't, yeah, so this is what I was, oh. oh, there's literally just a home tab. Okay, I see. All right, interesting. Um, so you can have that there, um, and you can actually control what, um, what the public page that people land on when they don't specify a page, where that mm -hmm. is. Um, so that's probably part of this here. I'll leave that. Um, this instance information, so this shows up in the about and a couple other places too. But you can set the name here, so demo peer tube. That's up at the top right, top left. You can have a short description, my peer tube. Um, description: Welcome to this demo peer tube. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can set like categories for what this is specifically about. Again, mm -hmm. this is all to kind of be like a friendly member of the Fediverse, right? So if folks are finding uh, your server and like, oh, well, you know, what is this one about basically? Mm -hmm. um, you can have, um, so people can flag videos as having not safe for work content and you can say, all right, we're gonna hide those, blur the thumbnails. Again, this is something I'm not using because I'm not putting that stuff on my own peer tube. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this has a lot more to do with if you have multiple people using or a large community using your peer tube. Mm -hmm. um, you can set terms of service, code of conduct, Talk about moderation. Who is behind this instance? Just me. Um, why did you create this instance? Funsies. Uh, to show people uh, how fun PeerTube can be. Uh, how long? Not that long. Um, how will I finance it? <laughs> um, Reclaim Hosting is paying for this one <laughs> um, for a little while. Um, you can even put on here like what kind of hardware it runs on, powered by the cloud. So none of that's necessary or uh, mandatory, I should say. But you probably should look at it um, and either delete stuff you don't want out of there or set your own descriptions, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll hit update on that. Uh, here we go. Now it's called demo peer tube. Um, so uh, basic. So there's. Um, Themes. There's one theme. There's only one theme installed, but you can install okay. more themes. Um, and you can choose what the landing page is. So maybe I should change that to just home. And that would then my home, you know, description mm -hmm. that I wrote would be there. Um, but there's also like discover trending recently added local. So um, for instance, on my peer tube, I have this set to local. And that's because I am federated with other PeerTube instances, but I feel like if people are visiting mine at video.jaden.me, the way I use it, they probably are looking for a video that I uploaded, right? Mm -hmm. That I So that that's how I have mine set. Whereas for reclaim.tv, we have it set to recently added to show everyone we're federated with, which is okay. nice because like Jim and I's videos will show up on there basically. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm going to set this to, uh, you know, home for now. Um, it, it is worth mentioning, like, there's discovering and trending. So these are, like, like uh, keeping track of. It's it's not really algorithm so much as, like, I guess technically it's an algorithm. It's just a very simple one. And that's sort of, like, how many views has this had in the last week? That's the algorithm, right? Like, okay. Um, so this would be across the entire uh Trending would be across the entire instance or any video it knows about that's federated. And mm -hmm. this would be across 
speak folks that you are subscribed to or on this particular instance. Um, then recently added is just reverse chronological list of videos that it knows about across the Fediverse that's, that it is federated with. And again, we'll, we'll talk about the Federation stuff a little bit more in a second. And then local videos is just on your particular uh, instance. I don't know what custom value does. I've never, I don't know what that is for. Um, I'll set my landing page to home for now. So it won't even show any videos on the home page. I mean, I, um, I guess if you added a specific page. Yeah, like I don't know how one. you would though. Because okay. you can't, I, there's probably a way to do it with like a plugin or something, but mm -hmm. out of the box, there's no like, make a new page at, you know, bananas.html. Like um, <laughs> there's probably a way to do that if you edit the code, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not, I don't know how. Um, all right. So, all right. So um, we can also set what is the default, like on the trending page, what is it going to use? I don't know what hot videos are. This reminds me of like some Netscape 2.0 90s stuff, like, uh, but whatever. Um, most viewed, most liked, right? Um, again, I, mean, I think hot videos is over time, like a short amount of time. What has gotten the most video views in, in the last, last week. week or so? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can change what the training page does. Frankly, for my use of like one person, I kind of don't care about any of these features. And in fact, I hide all of that stuff on my instance. And mm -hmm. I'll show, I have a blog post about how I did that. So um, we can mention that at the end of this video, but uh, if you want more information on that, you can check out that blog post. Linked in the week's resources. Yes. Um, so you can um, have this set to prefer the author display name versus the username in little video miniature things. That would be the display name here would be root and the username is at root. Mm -hmm. um, you can set this up to work with external auth. It's not something I've done yet, but it, there are plugins to work with um, uh, OAuth. And this checkbox uh, would force the use of one of those plugins. I shouldn't say it, not just OAuth. OAuth and single sign-on services. And stuff single like sign-on, okay. Yeah, OAuth is like kind of like single sign-on, but not. <laughs> um, so. All right. Uh, and it's not important for this video. It's, and I'm not an expert, so I'm definitely just going to say something that's just wrong. So we won't even go into what the differences are. My understanding is there is a difference. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, broadcast message. So this would just put like a banner at the top of the instance that has some like info that you could say like, hey, uh, warning, uh, we are doing maintenance next week Thursday at 1 a.m. Okay, so that that kind of broadcast and not like a we're live right now kind no. of thing. Yeah, okay. that kind of banner message. It would mm -hmm. be what I would call it versus broadcast. I it broadcast message is often um, what you see that called, but it's maybe a little bit um, confusing in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, going enable sign up. So by default. No one can make accounts on your instance. You can allow other folks to sign up, though. Um, you can require email verification. You cannot require that. You can have a limit. Only 10 people can sign up. You can have a age requirement on there. Mm -hmm. um, you can also have default video quotas. Remember, when we made that user account manually, we set those. These would be for folks who make their own accounts. Yeah. Um, so you can always I just... change these later, too. Yeah, so if I just went to the home page and hit login sign up, you would then... be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, import jobs. So this is another important feature. Peer to, as well as uploading videos and doing live streaming, you can also import videos from YouTube or other services. Um, this is off by default. And by default, there's a limit of only one video being imported at a time. Um, I've never needed to change this, but if you are using this with a lot of people to do a lot of YouTube archiving and stuff, then maybe you need to adjust that value to be allow more than one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, but it is off by default. So if I click this, um, I can I will have the option to import a YouTube video, and we'll show that in just a second. Um, 
you also have the ability to do torrent or magnet. Uh, torrent files or magnet, these are both related to torrents. Um, so it's like a distributed uh, file network. Most often um, used for piracy. I shouldn't say most often, but that's what I've seen it used for. Um, but basically, um, it can pull those in. Um, I think so the intention here being this is a distributed platform. You may have a, like a large video that maybe is not allowed by a government, right? Like maybe a government has taken this video down and people have to distribute it via a peer-to-peer -peer network. Maybe that's okay. when you'd use a torrent file. Um, I've seen that, um, you know, there are like j good cases for that in like journalism and countries that are particularly um, not friendly to journalists, things like that. Yeah. So, so would that be, I guess, sort of the idea of you are, in, you, you're taking the whole thing and making it a video by functionally torrenting it as you would do to a local machine? This is but, taking a torrent that already exists and making a copy of it that lives on your peer too. Okay. Um, so if you check that box, people will be able to do that. If you don't Got check it. that box, people won't have the ability to do that. I think most people won't need to check that box. Like that's a very specific use case. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually gonna leave it off because I don't, I, unless you are doing this to, again, like work with journalists in a country that like is taking down videos that people are uploading that are important for safety or you know political reasons historical archives stuff that i am super not an expert at <laughs> um then maybe you want to check that but most people aren't going to be using it for that purpose probably right mm -hmm. um so um and, and they do flag it, it i'll leave it enabled because it we can kind of see what that looks like here we're not going to actually do any of that but um the other thing that's really interesting is you can actually, this is a new feature that I've barely tested, but it's really interesting. You can actually synchronize an entire channel. So you can say, hey, make this, look at this YouTube channel, and every time a new public video is posted, make a copy over here on Peer2. Okay. We're gonna be doing that for reclaim.tv so that every new public video we put on YouTube ends up on our PeerTube archive as well. Um, mm -hmm. So super handy feature so that way basically it's doing what this is and again we'll demo this in a second but um you can give it a url to a youtube video and it will just make a copy for you um but it's doing that automatically and checking on uh, periodically for new videos so that's super cool um this one says like unless a user is marked is trusted their videos will stay private until a moderator reviews them again this is for other users on your instance so yeah and we saw that when you were setting up the Taylor test, yeah, yes. account because you might want to have one-off people. Yeah, there's a lot in here, and we'll link the PeerTube documentation site, um, which is very good, by the way. Um, I'm just gonna search for it really quick, um, but that goes into a lot more detail about all of these particular settings and um, you know moderating and what tools you have there, because there's a lot here. Um, mm -hmm. But I do like kind of going down the line talking at least talking about this a little bit but there's a lot more specifics on their documentation page yeah okay so you can set um max amount of channels i mentioned users can have more than one channel if you want um you can set a max for that default is 20. um this what search, happens if you set it to none um i don't know if you can you can't okay so um the search um but you could probably set it to one or 20 or whatever amount. And then, uh, cause people can have a zero quota, right? So like, right. like on YouTube, technically when you have a count, I think that's a channel, even if okay. you haven't uploaded anything. Right. Um, so, uh, I think it's kind of similar here. Like people wouldn't have to, um, upload any videos. You could set the quota to be nothing for most people. Mm -hmm. Um, and on top of that, uh, as far as I'm aware, channels aren't public unless they've publicly like published something. Okay. So unless you knew some person's username and visited them there, you wouldn't even see. Like there's mm -hmm. no listing of all the channels on the instance uh, Got by it. default. Okay, so there's also a search in here. So this says, hey, let folks 
uh, what does the search box do? By default, anyone can use the search box to search videos on that peer tube. Mm -hmm. Also by default, this box is checked, which allows people who are logged in to search for federated videos. So if you're following an instance or a channel on another peer tube, that would also show up in the search here. If you check this one, the same thing would happen even if someone wasn't logged in. And if you check this one, you can use basically a search index to get like results from a bunch of different peer tubes that you haven't even followed. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't set this up. Um, Mastodon has something similar called relays and they're frequently not used very often because really you wanna have a little it. smaller community. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit of work to keep them up, but basically yeah. this would allow, if you messed with that feature, you could theoretically find videos from thousands of other peer tube instances if you wanted to. Um, so that's interesting. I'm gonna leave those as defaults though. Mm -hmm. Typically, I'm mostly concerned with searching my instance. Um, okay, this is the federation stuff. So um, you can, uh, by default, other folks can follow you, but you can turn that off if you don't want. You can mm -hmm. even have them manually approve new follow, new followers to you. Mm -hmm. um, you can automatically follow them back. You can automatically follow instances of a public index that's similar to this, except that those videos would show up on your page. I don't think I'd recommend that unless you're trying to make, you know, some kind of monetized service out of this. Um, mm -hmm. So um, you can set the admin email in here. Um, you can have a contact form. So uh, if someone needs to get in touch with you, you can set a Twitter username in here, which is interesting um, that it's their uh, instance allowed by Twitter. Your video player will be embedded in the Twitter feed Use an image link card. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this is basically having to do with how embeds work on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, so I'll update that. Um, all right, now this gets into some tactical stuff and I'm gonna put some recommendations in here. These defaults will work just fine the way they are, but I'm gonna put some recommendations to make things faster, higher quality maybe, or, or not even higher quality, but more like allow the quality degradation. Like I mentioned before, you may want to have things transcode so that you can have multiple quality levels people can pick from in case they're on a slower internet connection like their phone or just they have slower internet. Mm -hmm. um, so for this, I'm actually going to pull up my own PeerTube instance, log in, and I'm going to just showcase what I've got going on over there. Um, settings wise. Um, so mine's on the right. It's the one that's like a dark theme right now. Mm -hmm. And this new one's on the left. So if I go to VOD transcoding, um, I have mostly defaults here, but um, web torrent is default, dis default disabled. Basically, um, it's like a different way to distribute, to, to, to play videos. They don't recommend using this anymore. It's mostly there for legacy. So I leave that just like it is off. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so resolutions that generate, it's automatically going to generate a version of the video at whatever resolution you upload. So let's say this video that we're recording right now is 1080p and I upload it, it will be at 1080p. Mm -hmm. I recommend also generating other versions so that people can watch on lower connections. And I simply do 720p and an audio only version. I like the idea of audio only existing. So that's an option. Mm -hmm. 720p is like the lowest HD resolution. 720p yeah. videos are typically by nowadays terms, relatively small video files, um, but they still look okay and certainly good enough on like a phone screen or, or mm -hmm. like a non full screen. Like if you're watching your laptop, but not full screen. Yeah. Um, I think they look pretty good. You could enable more of these, but keep in mind every time you do, that's more versions your peer tube has to generate, which will take processing time. But more mm -hmm. importantly, more versions you have to store and pay for the storage of. Right. So I only pick one version. Um, mm -hmm. and, but again, that's a personal choice. You could leave it just like this and it would only have the one version that you uploaded. And so that will be the lowest mm -hmm. from a storage perspective. What um, happens? I mean, I assume I know what happens, which is nothing or weirdness. But if you were to upload like a 480p video, 
and then say, please transcode to 720 or 1080. It won't make a 720 version. It will only, it will only, it's smart enough to know that like, hey, why would I make a higher quality when there's no more quality to be had, if that yeah. makes sense? Enhance. So, yeah, <laughs> enhance. Um, it doesn't have that technology. It doesn't have the CSI Miami technology yet. Um, yeah, but, but, but so it just, it won't make an extra copy. It's not like you'll have it won't. a Correct. duplicate. Okay. Yeah. Now to be fair, I don't know that I have um, done that with 480p. I have tested it with like, uploading 1080p for a little while i had my instance like because i didn't know exactly how these settings worked mm -hmm. <laughs> i had like all of these checked <laughs> just to see what it did and it would only make the versions up to the quality the of the original, original file okay. yeah um but uh, quickly i found like i don't really need all of these granular options and paying for the storage on them of course the lower you go the smaller the file size is but like 144p is just not acceptable. Like you, no one wants to watch that. That's like really small video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, for my stuff, 720p is probably the minimum you'd want to watch at, especially because for what I'm doing is a lot of screen sharing and stuff. Right. It's not going to be visible even really at 360p in a lot of cases. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, down here, you can also keep most of these the same, um, but uh, transcoding. So. Transcoding threads, this is how many like processes get made when it um, is transcoding a video. So basically, the way this works is it will chunk the video up into multiple sections. It, um. Frankly, it doesn't actually matter how it works, but I think it's cool to know. It basically, if you set this to one, it's going to make one process that transcodes the whole video. So it mm -hmm. will take a certain amount of time. If you do this to two, it will chunk the video up into two sections and work on it. What does that mean? It means for most servers or computers, it can actually do the work almost twice as fast in that case because it's chunking it up into two sections. Mm -hmm. Now, keep in mind that it's not going to actually split your video. This is just for the purposes of how it's distributing work. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing with Reclaim Cloud with Cloudlets is because we gave it 32 Cloudlets as a maximum, it has up to, let me just... Four gigs. Yeah, RAM. four gigs of RAM, but twelve point eight gigahertz processor. So what that means, if I do, um, let me install HTOP here. Oops, sudo, sorry, yum install HTOP. What that means though is it has a lot more threads or processing cores to work with, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, there's like more than one way to look at this, but if I look at this in HTOP, um, it figures it has six cores right now. Um, and that's, um, so so it has like between, it may make sense to have between six and 12 threads to work with, which will mean that when you upload a video, it will become available to watch a lot faster if we set this um, setting to be higher than one. So okay. again, it will work on one. It'll just take, you know, if you uploaded an hour long video and you're waiting for it to be finished transcoding, it may take an hour, you know? So um, the trade-off is it's using more fewer resources. resources. Correct. It's more resources for more threads. Yeah, so it will use only one thread and the associated resources, but it will take a lot longer. Yeah, versus if you do three or four threads. Well, what It'll... I would actually recommend is just setting it to auto. So okay. what it will do is it will actually look at the resources it has available and kind of use as much as it can or as much as makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see your Cloudlet usage go way up, but for only 10 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's done. And what that actually means in terms of what you pay for is it's actually about cost-wise the same, just things get done faster. Yeah. Because say you're using three Cloudlets for an hour, um, let, let's do a better divisible number. How about four cloudlets for an hour or two cloud two hours? That's the same price, mm -hmm. right? Um, because you're paying cloudlet per hour. So um, I would recommend setting this to auto. And to be fair, I haven't done like extensive, like tried it at every setting and recorded and made spreadsheets and stuff. This is just by me observing and looking at like the pricing breakdowns and Reclaim Cloud and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I recommend setting that to auto. 
Um, if you keep it on one, it's it's totally going to work fine. It just means that things will take longer to be watchable after you upload them. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, Video Studio. This is cool. This lets you, like, after you upload a video, uh, add a watermark, uh, cut the video up, things like that. Super neat feature. Um, and the neat thing is you can do that, and the video won't change its URL, which is super cool. Um, so I would recommend enabling that feature. Um, all right, so going over to live streaming. So similar set of settings. First of all, live streaming is not on by default. So if you want to use this for live streaming, you should turn that on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then there's some things in here. So you can have it uh, allow people to automatically publish a recording of their live stream afterwards. I would definitely recommend keeping that enabled. Um, you can also allow people to change their live latency. I have had issues with this where basically what this does is it'll say when people are making a live stream, it'll say, hey, do you want normal latency, high latency, or low latency? Um, low, I've had issues with buffering where the video won't be very watchable. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend using low. And high um, is supposed to allow folks uh, it's supposed to be like easier on yeah. servers that are having a hard time like with the load or whatever. I've never needed that. So I would actually recommend leaving this off. And okay. that means that every video will just use the default latency. People don't even get the choice. Mm -hmm. um, so I would recommend turning that off. Um, you can set how many maximum sim simultaneous live videos can be created on your instance. You probably would want to play with this if you were having multiple people using this. I've just set let, let these the default because it's just me. Mm -hmm. um, the defaults are 20 and 3. So 3 per user, 20 across the whole instance. 20 people actually streaming at the literal same time is a lot. A lot. Um, <laughs> but the, the kind of crazy thing about this is if you have a permanent live set up um, that's like someone's not currently streaming to, that counts against this. Mm -hmm. um, limit. So it's the likelihood that 20 people would actually be using all of the upcoming links is low. So this is something you'd want to play with and maybe do some testing with if you're running a large instance. Um, but it is still only three per user. So. Mm -hmm. All right, transcoding. Uh, you'll definitely want to leave transcoding enabled for live streams. I'm not even sure why this is an option to turn it off because as far as I'm aware, if you disable this, only, the live stream will only work in certain browsers and certain circumstances. So that needs to be turned on. Um, same thing, though. I recommend setting one additional resolution that so people at lower bandwidth can watch your video. And I would recommend that being 720p, personally. Um, so but, is the idea that it does this transcoding while you're streaming or at the end of the stream? To, yes. Yeah, so so transcoding is real hard on CPU. Uh, mm -hmm. um, again, in Reclaim Cloud, it's not so bad. Um, but but um, you know, this would never work in shared hosting. <laughs> yeah, uh, basically. Okay. Um, so it's what it's going to do is whatever resolution it's receiving. So if I'm using like um, uh, OBS and I'm I frequently do like 1440p, which is a pretty high resolution, mm -hmm. it will do that. And then it will also make one at 720p. Okay. So that's that's how I would recommend setting this up. If you uncheck this, it'll only just do, or sorry, if you leave this the way the defaults, it will only do the resolution that you are sending video at. It won't it won't provide any other uh, resolutions, which again, like I said, might be nice if you have someone watching on a phone or something, um, or just a little slower internet connection to have that 720p option. I think is good. And then similar thing here, live transcoding threads. The difference, though, is it's not going to go any faster because it's got to do it in real time. I would actually always recommend setting this to auto. And that basically it will manage how many threads it can use to make sure things are running smoothly at all times. So it's set to two by default. I would recommend setting it to auto. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I'm going to hit update on that. And then advanced. There's not much in here. I've never really messed with the caching stuff in here. This is just like the preview images on the home page. Um, but you can set custom CSS to change how your uh, site looks and JavaScript, which 
uh, could be nice if you wanted to use something like Google Analytics or Matomo Analytics, which is okay. an open source. You can use that in cPanel, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you could put the tracking code in there. Um, I'll go mention now, I have a blog post on customizing the look of PeerTube. It's literally mm -hmm. what it's called. That's what <laughs> um, it's called. And uh, what I did to mine, so basically I went in and installed a, a theme uh, which we'll show in a second where those are. And then I added a bunch of custom CSS right to this panel. So that's where you would do that if you wanted to. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're we're getting to the, the end here. A um, couple other things. So plugins. There are plugins. There are not a lot of plugins, but there are plugins. There are also themes. So mm -hmm. you can go to plugins and themes. I'll go to themes first and then hit search. And this will just show all of them, but you can search for one specifically if you have one in mind. Um, you Anything can install you recommend? Them. Uh, dark. Okay. <laughs> the and this is an official one. That's the mm -hmm. one I'm using. Um, I haven't really used any of the other ones to be honest with you. Um, so I just don't have experience with them. But you can install them, and then you will go to configuration basic to change the theme. So okay. let's let's try one here. I haven't tried, so let's try dark evolution. Oh, dark evolution. Yeah. Uh, configuration, basic. Oh, maybe I have to refresh. Configuration, basic, dark yeah. evolution. And then update. And then I'll refresh again. There we go. It's oh, is this theme. what Jim uses, do you think? Um, I don't know. I think Actually. he kind of followed my blog post. He's probably just using oh. the dark theme. Okay. Um, one of the cool things in their CSS um, mm -hmm. is they have a like variables set so that you can change the theme colors kind of easily actually. Oh, that's so nice. This is all that I'm doing to change my theme colors. I'm setting main color lightest, lighter and lightest, and then hover color and secondary color. Okay. Um, but this one uh, looks pretty similar to the dark theme to my eyes, but I'm sure there are differences. Um, looks like there's some transparency or something. Maybe maybe not. I think yeah. the I think the black is, is a different black. Yeah. It's orange. It's yeah, orange right. It's a little bit got a hue to it. Um, so there's there's a bunch of themes. It's cool. Um, how about I don't know, but, but yeah, there's themes. They're mm -hmm. not as radical as WordPress themes. Like they don't add functionality the way WordPress themes can. Okay. Um, it's really just in my experience, just some basic ones. I've Very really skinny. only messed with the official dark theme. That's that's all okay. I've really used. The cool thing is um, if you use the official dark theme and um, let me switch to configuration. Oh, got to refresh again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you install the official dark theme, one of the options will be light orange or dark and what that will do is it will use your browser's setting oh. or really your operating system setting for if you like light themes or dark themes, it will use that one. It's That's fun. fun. Which means like for my instance, because I picked colors that I think really only work in a dark theme, I actually had to uninstall or sorry, not uninstall, but I had to specifically choose dark because mm -hmm. I didn't want folks to see the light version of my site because I, I have like light pink and hot pink and I was like, eh, it's going to look bad on a, <laughs> a white background so hard I, to see yeah um, yeah i spent a million years trying to figure out how to make the light pink and purple on my blog visible it's not easy nope. <laughs> so i'm gonna actually uninstall those themes and we're just gonna go back to the basic one for now um but uh i suppose if i refresh it should be good all right, um, but there's also uh, plugins. So go to search plugins. Most of them are things for like offering um, uh, different sign-on experiences and stuff. But mm -hmm. there are some ones um, that are interesting. Live chat. So live chat is one that lets you do live chat on live videos. Nice. You can actually, there's some settings in there that are good to know about. Um, you can have like a social sharing button. Um, let me actually go back to mine here. Mm -hmm. And I'll show off some of the plugins I use. So um, I'm using Background Play, which on mobile lets people keep playing a video even if their screen is off. 
Okay. It's kind of cool. I mm-hmm. use the live chat. I use simple logo, which lets me set a logo. <laughs> by default, you cannot do this. Yes, you have to make your own theme by default to do this. So this plugin lets you set a logo without modifying your theme files, which I highly recommend. Super easy compared to, I don't even know how I would do it the other way. Um, mm-hmm. And then this one's kind of cool too. This one allows me to sort the recently added uh, videos pages. like Chronological local videos. instead of reverse chronological. Well, no, no, no. This one's actually by originally published at. So um, there's two date fields. One mm-hmm. is when the video was added to peer to, and when is when was the video originally published wherever it was from. So I have this set that way because I have some real old videos in here, this one in particular, mm-hmm. which is from my YouTube from like two years ago. But I uploaded it to PeerTube like a month ago. So I don't want it to show up here in my last month. I want it to show all the way at the bottom. Oh, That's what okay. that plugin does. So it uses that originally published at field instead, which I really... That's very cool. Um, so that's the plugins that I use. Um, there are other ones. They're hit and miss, to be honest with you. Like, there's not that many, first of all. Um, I mean, there's enough. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. like, um, there, you know, this isn't the WordPress plugin store where you get, like, nice statistics on how many people are using them and things like that. I've mm-hmm. definitely tried some here that just don't work or break my peer tube, and I have to uninstall them. So not break in a, like, I, I just had to go here and uninstall them. I've never had to do anything, like, fancy with the command line to uninstall a broken plugin. Okay. But, I'm not saying that couldn't happen, right? But um, one, I used to have one that allowed um, Chromecast and AirPlay. You could Chromecast and AirPlay my videos onto, you know, an Apple TV or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one broke with the newest version of PeerTube. So I'm waiting for a new update, but the last one's from nine months ago. So I have to leave it off until now um, mm-hmm. or until they update it. So, you know, it's and a plugin. Anything you install is turned on immediately. Uh, like WordPress yes. lets you toggle, like it's here, but it's not on. Correct. Yeah. If it's installed, it's working. And if it's uninstalled, it's gone. So, okay. Yeah. Good point. Um, there's no concept of installed, but deactivated. Not mm-hmm. a thing. Um, if you switch plugins to installed here, you'll see your list and you can also go to the settings pages. So for like live chat here, there's some settings on, like I have mine set to, um, automatically open the chat um yeah so i have it set so you can pick whether it's active for a particular live or not i guess i would honestly rather have it activate for every live video um you could also turn chats on for non-live videos um so there's there's all kinds of theming and other Mm -hmm. options in here this live chat plugin is awesome and really configurable and just great um, some of them are more basic. So like this simple logo one, just like, where do you want, where's your logo? <laughs> um, Tell us where to pull it from. Background play, I think does not have, this plugin does not have settings. <laughs> so <laughs> they're all over the place. But Keeping it simple. Yeah, but I, I like to show that they exist and like live chat's probably one you want. Maybe, maybe not, maybe you don't want live chat on your thing. Um, okay, so with all of that, um, now we're going to actually go into uh, uh, one more thing before we showcase the actual videos. I also wanted to mention here the, the Federation stuff. So um, I already showed that you can get to that menu from an administration uh, Federation. But this is what it looks like when you're following other instances. So I'm following archive.reclaim.tv and bava.tv. Um, and I have um, these two other instances following me. This is my whole instance. Um, to be fair. So there are also channels can be followed um, and individually too. Um, And is there a specific feed where you would go to see all of the stuff that you're, uh, the people you're following? following? I guess this is Yeah. So, well, yes and no. So this is subscriptions in the YouTube sense of like, I have an account and I hit the little subscribe like I want to see the new videos button Mm -hmm. um I don't really use my peer tube that way personally like I'm not watching videos on my peer tube unless it's my own video so Mm -hmm. I don't have anything subscribed however if I go to just videos 
Um, oh, actually, sorry. This is my video. So these pages down here are the public ones. Mm -hmm. um, if I go to discover, this is going to show, and you can see based on the username, what, um, where these videos come from. Okay. Um, I can also go trending and recently added. These are three are the same thing. It's just show me all the videos on this peer tube and the ones that you're following, but in three different sorted orders. in a yeah, particular way. Differently. Um, so yeah, so you can see down here, like here's, um, Jim working on some arcade stuff. Um, so mm -hmm. you got to look at that. Um, I believe I can also search in here so I can just go to like baba.tv. Um, and it will show me the channels and videos it knows about there. So, but that's only, they only even show up because I'm following them at the server level. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then local is just my videos. So uh, I mentioned this before, but I have it configured so that when you go to, and uh, I should I, say, I'm going to go in a private window. When you go. Oops, that's J JD. <laughs> whoops. Um, you only see my local videos just because I figure that's probably what would be most useful for someone visiting my peer tube. Mm -hmm. is they're coming for probably one of my videos. I don't have a lot of other videos on here. So um, I also, as part of that blog post I linked earlier, have basically everything hidden. Like you, there's no sidebar. You just get that. If you don't want to see local videos, uh, tough cookies. <laughs> um, actually, I guess you could change this filters and change it to federated. And that would, that would do that. But mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I wanted it to be as simple as possible. So um yeah so yeah. that's what that looks like from the oh i closed it didn't i um that's what it looks like from the uh federation point of view and then you also from here go into like your uh videos down here um and this is across the instance and so you can see videos that are both public and unlisted like i um have stuff in here that isn't public um like recordings from uh, D and D sessions, and we watched a holiday movie where I streamed it. I don't want that to be public because it's copyrighted. So I'm gonna actually delete this from my peer to a pretty soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I have a recurring live video here, so there's nothing there right now because I'm not currently streaming to it. But I can go in here and edit the title of it and all that kind of stuff when I'm not and, even streaming to it. And so that would be where you would go every time you want to do a live stream or that's just a thing that happens every god what day would that be friday this, thursday this is um just where i can see the stuff that's already been created now finally okay. when i want to publish something right if i'm logged in i get this publish button mm -hmm. um so uh, um you can actually from here do a bunch of different things so i can create live streams um so i can hit go live and pick the channel um pick the is it public is it unlisted um it's really so this is internal this is kind of interesting because you could theoretically have people have accounts in your peer tube to be able to watch your stuff but not be public they have to okay. log in this is so cool because this is not a thing you can even do on youtube right on youtube it's got to be public anyone can see it unlisted anyone can see it if they have the link or mm -hmm. private, which means only you can see it, which I don't know why you'd be doing a private live stream, but. That's know. fun. That's also, um, it's not quite the same because it's live stream, but I like that WordPress, I always liked that WordPress had that feature as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that's a really good, I think there are a lot of educational contexts where that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, so especially when pe folks are getting used to something or, or learning about it. So mm -hmm. I love that that's a uh, capability. Um, on here, I can pick normal or permanent. So normal is making a link that's sort of one-time use. So it's like, here's a link for my stream about um, Azura Cast. Mm -hmm. And when I stream to it, it will do the stream. And then it will, when I stop, it will start making a recorded, it'll prepare the recording of it. It'll and turn the transcode. It the same, yes. And people can watch it at the same URL. Super neat. Okay. It's how it's how YouTube does it. Mm -hmm. Recurring works the opposite way. Recurring is you can stream to this multiple times, and when it's done, it will republish a recording afterwards. But that'll be its own URL, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I per tend to use that because it's really handy in my uh, OBS setup 
um, to be able to point it at one URL all the time and not ever have to change it. Right. Um, that's why that's I do it that way. Maybe come back to in the OBS in a couple weeks. Yeah, we will definitely, I think, showcase that in the OBS session. We will do something. Um, I'm not sure how deep we'll dive into all of it, but we um, next week when we use all these tools together, um, that is something maybe we can show there a little bit too. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this distinction is really nice that you can choose basically. Got um, it import with torrent that we talked about the torrent stuff. I've never used this and it's sort of unclear to me what you would use this for, but it can grab video from torrents. I should say unclear to me other than I want to pirate a video. I guess you could do that. We talked about the journalism. Don't do that on our service though. <laughs> <You know. laughs> the journalism. Yes, journalism. Um, so import with URL, super cool. Let's you archive videos that are on YouTube and I believe some other supported sites as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it also mentions that you can synchronize remote channel. We talked about this where you could have it constantly checking for new videos on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. um, you do that from a different place. You have to do that from your library. But okay. this is super neat. So let's say I've got a video. Um, let's say I want to archive this one. And this is, I think, where PeerTube becomes just an amazing archival tool for your own purposes. Mm -hmm. um, where is my, oh, here we go. I can actually grab this URL here and just paste it in from YouTube and say, yep, that's good, we'll go to that channel. Let's make this one unlisted. And I'll import it. And that's gonna pull in everything from the Reclaim channel? No, just the one video I linked to. Okay. So, um, so oh wait, here, no, you would do the other thing in the library, right? Yes, so here it's going to, oh, I did something wrong. <laughs> um, I actually grabbed the, not the right URL, I linked to the image. <laughs> So let me actually get the real link for that. You grabbed the thumbnail? Yeah. Um, interesting that it even got this far. Um, so I grabbed that. Let's actually go to our new one over here. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we'll import with the URL. And let me hit that button again. Mm -hmm. So the cool thing is it's going to pull in metadata from YouTube, right? So it's going to pull in the category some tags, the description, the title, all that gets pulled in. Um, uh, it's not gonna pull in YouTube's auto captioning. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, I haven't tried pulling in a video that has manual captioning. I don't know if it can pull that, um, but you can manually add captions. Um, okay. So you can set like, all right, English is the language here, and then you can upload a uh, VTT or SRT file, so you can have captions. I'm so um, used to BTT standing for virtual tabletop. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, so, and it'll even pull in the thumbnail. Which is really oh, that's neat. nice. So um, it pulls in all that stuff, and I can hit update, and it will just go and pull that video into my library in the background. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing you can do. And then finally, what probably most of the time you're doing <laughs> is uploading a file. So that's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. You just you grab a file and you upload it. It supports tons of file extensions, which is really neat because um, YouTube doesn't support that many, um, but this will support like even audio files. You can just directly upload an audio file, which I think we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, and supports all kinds of video files and then it will transcode them for you and show them on your page. So uh, this is pretty simple. I mean, you, you basically just grab a file and upload it. Um, let me look in here. I don't really know what these are, to be honest with you. So. I wonder if, I wonder what, you said the URL thing can be picky sometimes, but I was thinking back to that AzuraCast recordings thing, and I wonder if there's a place where the AzuraCast recordings live that you could import with a URL. Um, so Maybe something. It doesn't, I don't, I don't think so, because what it doesn't let you do, it's using a command line tool called yt-dlp which is a command line tool to download from YouTube and other sites. And it's not expecting, for whatever reason, just a direct link to a video or audio file, as far as I'm aware. Okay. So it needs to be from like a supported site. So no, what you would do with a Zercast is you would just download those recordings. Download and upload, And okay. then upload them, yeah. Um, and they're audio, so they wouldn't take very long to download mm -hmm. or upload, or transcode for that matter. Yeah. So I'm uploading here uh, just an archive of a stream I did a little while ago that I happen to have on my laptop. 
Mm -hmm. but I can give it a title. Uh, you know, you can just like YouTube, you can do this stuff as it uploads. I'm not sure if this is even going to finish while we're doing this here, but we'll see. I think probably not. Um, but, uh, you know, my stream archive, um, I can, you know, set various things on here. Um, sure. Um, you can set it to not publish, which is interesting. So basically, if you don't do this, um, it will transcode the video and then you can say, all right, and it's live now. And you yeah. can actually go in and pick. Otherwise, it's just going to automatically make it live after you, or not live, but visible mm -hmm. after you uh, do this. Um, and this would be most important if you're setting it to be public. If you're doing it as private or unlisted anyway, then it doesn't really matter, you know, what, uh, if it's published or not, right? People aren't going to mm -hmm. find it. Um, and then scheduling. This is actually, I think, new, but you can actually schedule videos to be live as well, which is Ooh, cool. That's um, fun. Yeah. So, and then captions are here. Advanced settings. This is where you set your thumbnail. You can automatic, you can also um, enable or disable comments on mm -hmm. videos. And you can, I love this about PeerTube though, is by default, and you can disable this, but by default, people can just download the file, which I okay. think is super cool especially again for like an educational context. Like um, I've had situations in the past where I've had professors who were like, I've got this, these videos on YouTube that I want my students to watch. And one of them asked if they could download them so that they could watch it while they're like on the airplane mm -hmm. going somewhere. And I was kind of like, hmm, uh, well, there's two ways to do this. One of them requires them paying for a YouTube premium <laughs> and then they could do that if they're on YouTube. Um, and the other one requires them using tools that like Google, they're not illegal, but they definitely exist in a legal gray area. Yeah. Because you, you know, YouTube may not, doesn't really want them to exist. They want you to watch on their site because that's where mm -hmm. ads get served. All this kind of stuff. I wouldn't even say it's a legal gray area, but my point is the tools are by the nature of what they do, not that easy to use. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's, it's never, never great. <laughs> um, uh, Whereas so PeerTube. PeerTube will let people just directly download them, which is super neat. So if I go to my own PeerTube here where there's already stuff, I can just go, let me uh, turn the volume down before I do anything here. Um, I can just go to a video and of course I can watch it. In this case, it's remembering the timestamp I left off at. Mm -hmm. But I can also just hit this button over here and download it. Even nice. if I'm not logged in, that's an option. So. When you hit that, it'll give you the quality option. So maybe you just want it as an audio, mm -hmm. like you're gonna listen to it like a podcast. Um, you can do that. It's super neat. Um, so I that's one thing I really like about PeerTube as well. This is actually going faster than I thought, but um, yeah. All right. So and that's interesting. Over here, the video import looks like it went through. Um, I I can't leave this page while I'm uploading. Uh, otherwise, the upload will pause. Mm -hmm. um, not that I really care, um, but I can just open another tab while that's yeah. doing its thing. Um, and uh, we'll check out this video import. All right, so this one's already gone through, which is super neat. Um, that's a 30 minute thing, so that was pretty fast. Um, but uh, yeah, so now this little demo peer tube has um, a couple different videos here. Let's go to discover. Trending. This is our trending video on this. YouTube. Um, <laughs> it's got the it's got the most views in the past. Yeah, week. one of one. Um, Zero. <laughs> Look at that so, number. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a lot. We went through a lot of different things, but that's the kind of nature. PeerTube can do a lot. So mm -hmm. hopefully, um, we did a good job kind of showing everybody who watches this what's possible with PeerTube. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll make sure to link to. Um, the PeerTube documentation, um, my blog post on customizing the look of it, uh, if you want to do that with it, uh, look blog post. And I'll also um, uh, have the instructions on how to do HTTPS so you can mm -hmm. copy that command instead of having to type it all. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, you know, let us know in Discord or, or wherever, really. Um, and... Uh, Hopefully you can play around with it. I think PeerTube is a fascinating tool. Next week we will um, 
be demoing streaming to it. Um, probably also streaming to Omcast, which doing two streams at once is not real easy, but I have some ideas to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and Zuracast and Jitsi, and I'm very excited about it. So we'll, uh, we'll, we're will we going to do a big extravaganza. So um, let us know if you have questions, and we'll see everybody next week. See you next week. This was very fun. Thank you, Taylor. Thanks.